Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to April's edition of She Is Magazine. And I'm so happy and honored that I get to sit down and chop it up just to, for a little while with A.V. Perkins. And I saw one of your videos. It was A.V., right? A.V., <laughs> my dad, right? I love it. <laughs> yeah. And so we have A.V. Perkins with us. I'm going to, um, aside from being the uh, creator, co-creator of University of Dope uh, Card Game and so many other wonderful things that I've been doing my research, uh, could you just share who you are and, you know, what you'd like us to know about uh, Miss A.V.? Well, um, my birthday is July 14th. I'm, <laughs> I'm a dancer. I like long walks on the beach. Um, but besides that, yeah, I tell people, if Martha Stewart and Snoop Dogg had a baby, it would be me. That is the best way to describe myself. And you will hear me say that until forever, or hopefully they never do anything too problematic, right? I love it. I love it. That's so, awesome. So yeah, my Martha side is I had a DIY blog called AV Does What. I've done work with HGTV, Apartment Therapy, Drew Barrymore Show in that capacity. And, yeah. you know, making crafts. I love to be crafty and recipes and all of that stuff. And my Snoop Dogg side is University of Dope, the disrespectful party game for <laughs> hip hop lovers. So, you know, both both of them combined are me. I love it. I love it. We share a, a similar passion with the DIY. And I, you know, found mm -hmm. that you were on Flea Market Flip, which is one of my favorite shows oh my god and it was a great experience yes i love um finding stuff and repurposing it so it's you know the thrill of the hunt i guess it is so mm -hmm. um that's that's pretty cool so um again i just had a couple things i wanted to um you know allow the audience to take a peek into who av perkins is and um you this we could start um by talking about your uh card game university of dope card game uh tell us how that got started and you know what the game is well it's not trivia that's what i have to get out of the way mm -hmm. from the top because when yes. people hear hip-hop and game they're like oh my gosh i don't know <laughs> like you don't need to be a historian to play our game because yes. our game is majority rules so if i asked you or anyone to erase one person from hip hop history, Queen Latifah, MC Light, Lauren Hill, or Missy, who would you get rid of? That's an impossible question. Is Ooh. it? Um, oh, MC Light. Okay, so <laughs> let's say, let's say you and someone over there said yes. MC Light, and I said Lauren Hill right? Mm -hmm. I would have lost that round. And whoever loses the round has to take a drink. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or, I mean, you can play it for points. If you play oh, it for yeah. points and you're in the majority, yes. that means you're safe. And yes. the, you receive five points and the first person to 50, like 50 cent, wins the game. And yes. that is how University of Dope is played. We also have pop quiz questions where it oh. can be something like two people have a Harlem Shake battle <laughs> your peers will determine if you passed or failed and if not you already know the deal what happens if you fail or do your best dmx impersonation so cards like that questions like that are what makes up university of dope and i i i so love the essence of the game because it's completely for the culture and there's just mm -hmm. certain terminology certain phrases that you know if invoke memories or you know uh mm -hmm. times in our you know I, I guess younger days so just hearing the term Harlem Shake kind of takes you back to you know uh, to a party or you know a, a very familiar memory you know those yes every, every dance that came out you know I didn't know how to do them but I definitely know how to do the Harlem Shake so that yes. is that is cool in itself and so the, I think they even uh what's even more dope than a game is that it's founded by two black females shout out shout yeah. out um yes and our whole team is black women so yes. yeah black women owned led operated all of that that is so amazing and this being uh women's history month so just you mm -hmm. know just again congratulations to you Thank ladies you. for uh creating something that's for us um something that we can all be proud of and um you know speaking of being proud drum roll 
y'all <laughs> y'all in target right now y'all oh my god target. landed in target yeah it's it's been an amazing journey thus far being in target but yeah we are in target that is so good. nationwide <laughs> Nation, yes it does have that nationwide like right out yes. there y'all out there where tabitha brown is swimming i'm like y'all are like y'all really in the real target <laughs> yes 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 and when and then what was awesome is because initially not i mean initially we were in the black history section yes with with like that whole showcase and mm -hmm. then we were right next to tabitha brown's things yes. but we haven't picked up for just regular distribution so you can mm -hmm. still go to target now and yes get. yes that's yeah. that is amazing and so where did you see this game going i mean when when you sat down and you know you know you asked your friend the question about wu-tang um you know did you see this ending up in target i i see what i see hasn't even happened yet right yes. so i see like i'm very much a sky's the limit person so like this is like yes. this is great but this is not it like this is like okay now y'all are starting to understand where we are mentally but this this is this is a drop in the bucket it's no shade obviously right so yes. we love what we have and we love our supporters but you all have not seen nothing yet you have not have seen the best of what we offer so it's it's lit i love yeah, that so much Tar more target is not your ceiling i love no no oh! I it's love literally that. <laughs> it's the first button like yes. maybe maybe it's like four or two on the elevator <laughs> That is so, so good. Um, so, you know, talking about hip hop and, you know, uh, it being a part of culture, being, you know, part of, you know, who I am as a black woman. So mm -hmm. uh, if you were, uh, want to ask you this question, if you have, were riding in a car, a four hour car ride with anybody, who mm. would it be and why? Okay. So this is like anybody ever. Anybody ever. And what y'all listening to? What y'all bopping to as you ride it? <laughs> wow, this is this is tough. Um, well, I want to give two of those slots to my parents, right? Yes. I go two slots to my parents, and then um, huh, the other two. Um, <laughs> uh, my my paternal grandmother. Um. And the fourth slot would be, I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure. I'm going to just put three okay. people in this, in this car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so let me, let me well, ask no, you again. I'll, it's you a, know what? You know what? The fourth slot, I take that back. I'm going to give it to my boo. Your boo. Trevor Noah. <laughs> Trevor Noah is my boo. Um, Shouts out to boo. So, <laughs> yep. 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 So it'll be me. My mother, my father, my uh, paternal grandmother, and Trevor Noah. Yes. Uh, all there right. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So uh, next question. What's been one of your greatest accomplishments? One of my greatest accomplishments? Um, I w University of Dope, uh, for sure. Because, <laughs> you know, how it, how it came to be was so organic. Mm -hmm. And we've gone through a lot as people, right? During this time, it's been six yes. years, almost seven years. So it's been very transformative for all of us involved. And we've become closer as friends on the team. Mm -hmm. And we've all, you know, life be life. And so you have to deal with certain things and we've persevered through and it has paid off like things in, per in our personal lives. And then, surviving a pandemic and then yes. <laughs> going into quarantine I mean well quarantine and the pandemic and then yes. going into Target it's just like when people say hey don't give up the breakthrough is right there like that's literally this is a living testament of it and my and like I told you it's this is not yeah. the ceiling this is the beginning but yes. imagine just like ting 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 breaking through breaking through to get to where you feel is your your initial breakthrough so that is definitely one of my um, most proudest moments, accomplishments ever, for sure. Gotcha. And what's one of your toughest obstacles, A.B., that you faced 
as a as a I want to ask this question as a woman because I know there's yeah. cer certain areas that you know things that we have to break through just because uh -huh. uh, you know of the gender inequality. So, what's one of the toughest things you faced as a woman? Well, um, like during the time, like I mentioned, I our second year in business, I had a crazy bout of depression. I, and I never experienced anything like that. My father had passed away, not during that time, mm -hmm. but years before, but it literally cat caught up to me. And it was, how can I, I cannot run a business under these conditions. And then I cannot run my own endeavors. Like my Martha side and my Snoop side was suffering. Like, it was just like, there was no side. It was like, A, B, <laughs> you gotta just like make it through. So to be able so that was definitely one of the, my biggest obstacles um ever in life but being able to persevere and get on the other side of it is very rewarding obviously yeah <laughs> yeah that's 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 awesome now you mentioned something that's you know a buzzword right now in uh in society we're talking about mental health and depression and those things and uh mm -hmm. since we're here how did you um, what were some of the steps? How did you dig yourself out of that place? Because it's it's a reality, especially for entrepreneurs. Um, mm -hmm. We can be depressed on Monday and lit on Thursday. Yeah. So, um, you know, that the depression is different from I just don't feel like myself today. Um, so yes. how did you pull yourself out of that place that you call depression? So for me, it was literally like it felt like I was drunk. Right. But mm -hmm. you like, you know, like I'm not talking like just regular, you've been drinking a little bit too much with your homegirls, mm -hmm. like college drunkenness. Right. Like really like, wait, I can't see straight, you know, mm -hmm. like that's how it felt. But without the fun part yes, of <laughs> drinking and doing hood mm -hmm. rest stuff with your friends. So that's how for me, depression felt like it literally felt like my brain just like shut off. So it wasn't something like, OK, I, I just feel sad. Because other positive things were going very well around me in terms mm -hmm. of business. So anyone who's ever dealing with mental health, I don't want them to ever feel like it's their fault or it's something like mm -hmm. a direct outside influence. It's a chemical imbalance because anyone could have seen like, hey, AV, you're like winning right now. But it's like it doesn't even matter because it's like if someone's turned the light switch off in your room, right? Like the lights off. That's it. So that's how it, it felt. But what helped me was therapy, mm -hmm. you know, um, understanding that it's not my fault. You don't have to feel any um, survivor's guilt, you mm -hmm. know, because with my father's untimely passing a lot, I, that's when I created my blog to channel those lessons and everything that he taught me. And then I got success with that. And then that eventually led to university of dope. So then it's like, butterfly effect like if I went back yes. in time if he never passed would I have all of this and then should I be happy that I have this like do should I feel guilty that I'm like oh my gosh I feel so blessed but then you don't have like your pops right yeah but I had but I had to come to grips in terms that we're all going to you know transition at some point and he is proud of me still so yeah. and he was before so it, it doesn't um I had to let go of that limiting belief mm. thinking that okay would this not exist if he weren't here? I can't even say that. It, maybe it could have, right? right? You always like to craft. You always like hip hop. These are not new things. So yeah. So coming to that realization and with therapy helped me get out of it. And then, but that resilience that was built during that time definitely prepared me for quarantine, right? Yeah. <laughs> because we were going through supply chain issues just like everybody else in the world. And we had to pivot during, like, you know, we have a physical card game and mm -hmm. there's no decks. How right. do you make that work <laughs> in a business? Like your product is not here. How can you right. sell it? <laughs> so we had to, you know, we had to pivot and be agile. But I knew once they were talking about shutdowns and all of these things, we were in the middle of rebranding. So we were already putting money into it, but we weren't getting our uh, like new prototypes in and yeah. all of that because of supply chain issues but i told myself i have and, and my team that we have everything we need to do everything that we want and that was very much like a mantra going mm -hmm. through quarantine like we have internet 
Thank God everybody's internet bill is paid. We have light. <laughs> yes. Everybody light bill is paid. You got electricity. You know what right, I mean? Well, right. electricity. Yes. The rent, the mortgage, all of those things are paid so you can charge your devices. So let's go. Yes. And we have a sound mind. Thank God. Yes. Let's run up the scoreboard in quarantine. And that's what we did. I love it. Run up the scoreboard. We used all the tools available yes. to us. Like every tool. Yes, and that's it. That's a, thank you for sharing that portion. Um, yeah, thank you so much. So I got a couple more questions. Um, fill in the blank. If there was no blank, there would be no hip hop. If there was no blank, there would be no hip hop. Uh, if it wasn't for the Bronx. Yeah, the be no boogie down Bronx. The <laughs> boogie down Bronx, right? And that's where I'm from. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rep that. So yeah, cool. if it wasn't for the Bronx, there would be no hip hop. Yes. Cool. So question. If hip hop was a shoe, what would it be? If hip hop was a shoe, what would it be? Um, you know, I'm gonna go with I mean, there's been plenty of shoes that have been representative, you know, been represented in the culture. Mm-hmm. But I think Air Force Ones are kind of like one of the best representatives of it right because air force ones you know they're classic they yeah. they you can customize them so you can have you can have some basic air force ones or you can get yours razzled and dazzled you just need yes. a pair of white ones right? <laughs> right you can go and get it done or you can just wear white ones and people will still it'll still be fashionable so it's adaptable just like how hip-hop is um, right like you can get a pair that. of jays they may not be as uh, adaptable because I've never seen someone really wear an all white pair of Jordans. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I know it exists, but people just don't do it. But you can easily get a solid pair of um, Air Force Ones. And depending on the era that you lived in, they were more accessible, right? Yes, so, right. I mean, inflation has made everything inaccessible, but... Yes. There was a time you could get, if you wasn't able to get J's, you can get Air Force Ones and you would still look good at the function, right? Yes. So, <laughs> so yeah, I think Air Force Ones is just, it, it can, it can be adaptable. It can be customizable. It can be accessible and exclusive I like depending that. on what you're doing to it. So it has the versatility like hip hop. Gotcha. So we're near the end yes. of our interview. What is okay. your superpower? My superpower is manifesting. Anything I speak, good and bad, mm-hmm. comes to pass. So I am very mindful that words mean things and the power of life and death is in the tongue. That is what my parents have taught me mm-hmm. from, I don't know, from the womb. So I learn, I can't even joke about certain things. I don't mm-hmm. even do hypotheticals. And I also don't let people hypothetically put me in some situation that's dumb, right? Like, oh, what if you... I'm going to stop you right there. I'm going to stop you right there. Yes. There is no what if I, because I wouldn't do yes. that. I'm not yes. doing it. Right. Thank you. Next caller, right? <laughs> <laughs> so things I think, and then things I speak come come to pass. I, I'll share this with the, with the audience. I, yeah. I literally had a dream about University of Dope. I didn't know it was University of Dope, but at least four years before it came to be, maybe a little bit more. Mm. So this is what this wasn't exactly University of Dope, but as how my life has gone, it has to be University of Dope. Mm-hmm. I had this dream, and this was very random. I w- and I was working. I didn't have a blog yet, so none of this was happening. I was I was a decorator at a furniture store, right? So that's what I was doing, and I had this dream that Memphis Bleak came to my house. But it wasn't my like the house that I was in. It was like a condo. Like it was like super luxe, right? Yeah. So I'm there. I get the doorbell and Memphis Bleak is at the door. But it's like, it's like I'm like watching a television show of myself, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm me looking at this, like, wow, why is Memphis Bleak there? But me in this dream or TV show dream of myself. Mm-hmm is very much friends with Memphis Bleak. Cause I'm like, Hey, like, you know, I'm like, what's up? And he's like, what's up girl? Like, he's like it's like that kind of scene. So I'm like bewildered. Like, why do I have this close relationship with Memphis Bleak? But anyway, we go sit down and somebody comes like a waiter or a butler. So clearly I'm like, 
I'm living, I'm living well, you know, Madison's <laughs> coming over and there's a butler and he, and he served us eggs and it was very like, it was scrambled eggs, boiled eggs, fried eggs, omelets, <laughs> every day, quiche. There was all of these eggs and him and I are just like, you know, chilling, kiki ki I don't even know what we're talking about, but we're just having a good ass time with, sorry y'all, we just <laughs> having a good darn time with these eggs so when i woke up and i was like this this is crazy i looked right. in the dream dictionary like one of them websites i was like what yes. does eggs mean and it's a sign of prosperity mm. so i was like so i went memphis bleak so it must be something with rap and hip-hop because i know dreams don't be like literal like i don't think memphis right. bleak is gonna come and hand me a check but i was open to that too you know because <laughs> anything right. happened and then years later when university of dope came to be i was like Yo, that's the dream. That's yes. what that meant. Hip hop is gonna bring me prosperity. That's and it, and yeah. it's so crazy that God uses. I mean, what someone mm-hmm. would think is foolish, your love of hip hop, just you and your friends sitting around talking about something, and I I think that's what you know makes God God. I mean, He can yes. do anything, and mm-hmm. so. I am so happy that you're living in a manifestation of that dream. Um, I know that it certainly takes faith because there's been several days, hours, months, and years since that dream, but you're actually, you know, sitting in it, living in it now. And so, you know, in our closing, um, you know, there's uh, entrepreneurship is, um, you know, one of the uh, largest areas that women are dominating in right now. And, um, to the woman that's sitting on, you know, sitting on her dream. Um, she hasn't yet manifested. She sees what God said, but um, she's just hesitant to move. Not sure for what reason. Um, what's what? just one step, one bit of advice, one thing that you can drop um, to help a sister out? <laughs> you know what? Uh, you know, people ask me this question and I usually say like, just do it. Right. And I do still feel that way. Mm -hmm. But in this moment, I feel called to say this Mm -hmm. person, they need to tune out the noise. There are social media can be a great tool. It can also be a time suck. It can also be a time waster. And just like how I mentioned about manifesting and speaking life into your life, people can use it to speak death into the lives of others and into themselves so we are fortunately and unfortunately exposed to many people's limiting beliefs so yeah someone can say why would you make a card game about hip-hop that don't even make no sense right but i already i'm already at this phase in my life and even way before then Whatever I say I'm going to do, that's it. So you better get on the, the right side of history, right? right. So I, don't usually, I usually don't have yes. naysayers because yes. they're like, A, B, she's going to do it, so we might as well. Like, if I have haters, I don't know them because they don't tell me that because <laughs> I'm going to do it. So yes. good luck and, and thanks for watching. But um, <laughs> but with, with, with a lot of people, people will project their limiting beliefs onto you intentionally or unintentionally because mm-hmm. they have their own fears. Cause yes. why would you quit your job to start a card game? Granted, I ain't never have no nine to five job to quit. So I'm not even saying me as an example, that, 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 um, <laughs> that, that, part, yeah. that, that job, that, that job with the, that I had the dream at, Yes. I was there for one year and that was the only nine to five I've ever had in my life. So what job were you quitting, sis? So doesn't that doesn't matter. Yes. <laughs> right. But other people may be used to certain levels of security, right? So yes. it's like, oh well, you might as well just stay here because this is the safest it can get. Mm. And and in some regards, they can be right, right? Mm-hmm. So it's not like multiple things can be right at the same time. Mm. But you have to tune out the noise, sit in silence. And let God speak to you. So you know for like it's already it's already you already heard the you already heard it, but you need to hear it and hear the next step so you can do what's next. Cause sometimes that can mean doing it on the side. That can mean being uh, uh you know, um a side entrepreneur. That I, I think that's what I've heard people mm-hmm. refer to it as, or part-time, or that may mean seeking out someone who who is doing something similar. And wanting to join their team, uh-huh. right? Because we're not, we all can't be the owner, right? 
Right. But you can be on a team that is fair. You can be on a um you can work with a business that is considerate of your of your feelings and grow a product because only because you're good at um let's say I don't know graphic design that doesn't mean you may be good at yeah. operations right and even right. with us on the team we work on what we're good at like mm-hmm. I do the press the marketing social media because mm-hmm. I'm good at the branding of of that and, and marketing and then my business partner she does operations because mm-hmm. she loves spreadsheets right <laughs> <laughs> so that. You know, like, and I like talking to people so even though you asked me to tell y'all one thing I'm like okay well <laughs> here goes the sermon of all the things that you should do, right? Because I just love connecting with people, yes. teaching, and all of that. Because I want, I want people to win. So, oh yes. wow, that's one of my sayings. I, I want you to win. Yes, yes I do. Yes. And not only do I want, not only do I want you to win, I want you to want you to win. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, because oh, that's, that's even better than me wanting you to win. Exactly, because people, one, people are flighty. Right. Yes. So it's like, oh, this person wanted me to win, but now they're not in my life anymore because life be like that. But you yes. need to want yourself to win more than anybody else. So you That's can keep meeting and attracting other people who want you to win. So, yeah, you got to tune out all of the noise and want to actually win. That is so and Put yourself good. out there. Yeah. That's, that's a- the third one. Yes. Put, put yourself, yourself out, out there. there. Shamelessly. 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 Put yourself out there. You... Don't overthink. You know how many emails I get from Bed Bath and Beyond? <laughs> right. Think about that. The next time you're like, yes. I don't, don't want to bother nobody. <sighs> Bed Bath and Beyond bothers me 45 times a day. <laughs> and they're closing, unfortunately. Girl. But, you know, between you... Bed Bath and Beyond, Bath that just and slapped works. me in the head. Like that like slapped me right here in the head. You are so oh, they, they, they so send me good. emails so many times a day. <sighs> And you over here wow. talking about I don't want to share it on Facebook. What? what? <laughs> oh, and they supposed god. to be your friends. <laughs> oh my god, that's a that's a perfect place to pause here. Yes, that's that's so dope. Thank you so so much for your time today. Um, it was definitely mm-hmm. well spent. Um, I that last piece of advice that was for me. And so I'm <laughs> right. I'm definitely yeah. going to take that. But thank you so much for what you've contributed to the culture, for what you've done for, you know, to be seen for to help other black women to be seen. Thank you so very much for um, just saying yes to this interview. And congratulations yes, again. Time. Congratulations yes. again on that whole target thing. Hey, wow. And I'm yeah. waiting for what's next since we just on floor two. Hey. Yes, exactly. And <laughs> we have an R&B deck. Yes. So make sure you get everyone get that. Uh yes. University of Dope. Um A V does what? A V Yes. D O E S W H A T. Watch this, watch oh. this. Yes. Hey, pow, pow, pow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we'll have all the links in the magazines. Y'all go ahead and order your game. Um, I'm thinking we're gonna do a whole party and just video it and you know, tag you. Yeah, that's what we're gonna yes. do. I you know what? I love a good party. Yes. All yes. right. Please, please do it. <laughs> Thank you, AV. You enjoy the rest of your afternoon. No problem. I appreciate you. Bye. Bye. Bye.